Hello everyone, this is G-Shock High Fashion Channel. Today, I'm going to continue on part 2 of this Golf Master G-Shock module demonstration 5477 module. So, if you watch happen to operate on the similar module, you're going to find this video helpful as well. So, in this part 2 of the video, I'm just going to cover on these tiny parts of the watch, which is for the sensor. And to access this sensor, we only have one button, which is down here, lower right button with this white thing over here. So this is where you can access the function. Let's run through what we're gonna see. First, uh, which is COMP compass, which is the last mode that I was before. The watch will remember it. When I press this button right now, the arrow hand over here will go to LT. LT will stand for altimeter, and it's gonna be three times. Let's hear it out. Like that and then if I press this again we'll go to thermometer and the wash will be four times look at that and at depth meter it will be only once for a long beep long beep press again single beep for barometer and that is a way for you to know which sensor you are already got into without even the need to look at the watch all the time okay that's for the introduction on this sensor let's go back to home time real quick at home time, what else could we do that's regarding to the sensor over here? And that will be this part up here. This is the change in atmospheric pressure graph being displayed up there. We are only gonna have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots only. Each of them could be set up to every two hours or every 30 minutes. So just add it or multiply it by yourself to know how long for the range you are able to tell the change in atmospheric pressure. At your place okay that's done on this partially the ring up here will be used at barometer and also altimeter which i'll go to after all right press the sensor button and we'll go to the first one which is at barometer all right current barometric pressure reading in my room right now is 1008 hectopascal it will keep continue taking reading over time and update it every 30 minutes or two hours we'll get to the after if you guys haven't noticed this second hand already stopped moving and it is pointed up to this 3 o'clock index over here which is 0. This ring up here will be used to show you change in atmospheric pressure. This reading is actually this reading at the last part right there. So that do keep that in mind. However, this second over here will actually update to a live reading actually. Just in case all of a sudden there is a change in atmospheric pressure and the pressure is going up this second hand over here will go up by 1. So 1 equals to 1 hectopascal. If the pressure is going low, it, go, it will go low at negative 1 hectopascal. So that's about the hand. If you press this upper left button up here, it will go and continue to show the time instead. Let's go back to down here. Okay, down on this uh, simple uh, barometer uh, function, it is similar to most G-Shock to have barometer in them. That is about it. However, if I pull the crown in this mode, we could set this thing up or calibrate it. Just in case you have other source of atmospheric pressure, you can look at that and match the watch with that uh, gauge you have. All you need to do is scroll the crown upward. Let's uh, fast scroll over there. You can do that as well, just in case for more convenient adding or subtracting value stop scrolling and just in case you messed up and you want to reset it back to factory setting all you need to do is just press two buttons here and off will appear and down will back to factory setting that's done on the uh, value calibration let's go to the next one press mode down here we'll go to the interval how many minutes or hours you want your G-Shop to keep you updated on the atmospheric pressure reading in my case, I already set my watch to keep me updated every 30 minutes. You can scroll the crown here to keep you guys updated every 2 hours. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, every low-end G-Shock will only allow us to update uh, every 2 hours. Such as the arrangement over here, it will only update you every 2 hours. I prefer my watch to update me every 30 minutes instead because it is way more precise, way more accurate, and way more on demand. I mean, I want to be updated as soon as possible about the change going on in the in my surrounding to for me to be able to predict the weather quicker that is a neat thing as well that a golf master model have actually let's leave it at 30 minutes 
and press mode will go back to the setting. However, do keep that in mind. The of the more often the watch needs to update you this uh, reading, I mean, it will equals to the more often the watch gonna need to use this sensor, this parameter sensor over here, and that will equals to more power consumption. Push the crown back in, and everything will go or fall back into place. And there is one other thing that I would like to share this regarding this a barometer function. Press mode. We're gonna need to go back to home time first, and at home time, if I press the display button and keep holding it info will appear info on when info is on you can see a barrel writing up there in the display look at that so when barrel is on this hand over here instead of pointing to tight graph it will point up to this part of the watch down here we have four arrows so going down or going up when it is pointed at up it gonna sh indicate that there is a rapid change in atmospheric pressure that equal going up and if the atmospheric pressure is like gradually going down and, and all of a sudden it's going up, it will point it to this direction over here. And same goes with the opposite part. And if you guys notice, we have this blue colorway in this lower part over here. The reason they highlight this part in blue because this part is the most important part whenever you want to use the watch to tell or predict the weather. So that's why they highlight that thing in blue and leave the rest in white because all those aren't as important as this part down here. Okay, that's as far as this part. And one more thing I need to tell you guys is that since you turn the barrel on, instead of uh, updating you every 30 minutes or every 2 hours, the watch will now update you this reading for every two minutes instead here it is it will update you every two minutes so it gonna use this sensor way more often like every two minutes and which equal to more power consumption as well and hence whenever you turn this barrel on to avoid any further power consumption the watch will turn off the auto light the watch will turn off the uh, auto receive atomic time and it will turn off the alarm as well if you have it on and basically turn off every function that requires the watch to beep because the only beeping sound that you are supposed to need to hear is when there's sudden change in atmospheric pressure I mean the beeping sound when any of this occur is pretty unique and distinctive and different from other beeping sound that you are gonna hear from other functions well you will know right away something's fishy going on when you hear that distinctive beeping noise Okay, that's as far as the barometer function and I believe that is all. Let's go back to the sensor mode. Over here, barrel will still remain on and barrel over here. So even though the watch uh, not pointing to barrel, it will, the barrel at the end here will still going on and it's still gonna read every two minutes. So if you're really a serious person at reading a barometer graph, you're really gonna need or really depending on this watch to predict the weather for your daily plan. You're gonna need to leave this on and go to this mode and basically get all this reading ready for you guys. And one other thing about analog G-Shock that digital G-Shock didn't have is whenever you are totally gonna depending on this watch, you don't actually need to pull the watch directly to your face to able to tell that there is a small change in atmospheric pressure going on. You can just view it from the side like that. Look at that. This second hand over here is very visible. Even though at this angle, or even this angle, you know right away there's a sudden change in atmospheric pressure, which is gonna be very helpful and convenient as well uh, compared to when you're wearing the full digital model. I believe I covered everything on the barometer, which is the most important part of the Golf Master, by the way. So that's why I covered plenty of time on this part. And I mean, I mean, look at that. They actually highlighting this big ring up here. This is actually to indicate that barometer change. So. I need to focus more time on that part and of course before I proceed we could also save this information that we just looked at and explore around by pressing this sensor button and instead of one time press and hold it for about two seconds our C will appear and this data over here including the date the time and this reading will be stored at recall mode I'll get to that at the end of the video now done on the barometer let's go to the next sensor which is the COMP refer to the compass this will also operate similarly to most G-Shock, I believe all G-Shock actually, yeah. But 
Anyway, on this base, the 12 hour uh, index will be pointed up to your objective location, which is this guy over here. So we're looking at 233 degree from the north direction. This second hand will keep pointing to the north direction all the way around to here, will be 243 degree. And one thing that I like about a golf master is that you don't need to uh, place the watch parallel to the floor to get an accurate reading unlike how you need to do on arrangement for example or I believe most lower end uh, triple sensor or twin sensor model let's give, let me give you an, an example of what I mean all right I'm now tilting both of the watch at the same angle and for the golf master the reading is 233 and on the arrangement it is 243 it's like way off compared to the golf master and why is that i mean that is the difference between high end g-shock and also lower end g-shock for arrangement however you really need to tilt the watch parallel to the floor to be able to tell the accurate uh, compass reading look at that we are now at 233 similar to the one on the golf master so that is the thing you need to consider as well whenever you're gonna need to buy this watch i mean this watch is way better because you have those gyroscope built in them and you don't need to take the watch out to make it flat in this awkward position whenever you want to use the compass you can just use it as you normally would tilt your hand and straight away know which direction you are pointing at and it is very accurate let's tilt turn the watch here we'll keep pointing to a uh, north direction which is over there with that okay that's as far as the function if I pull the crown in this mode what else I could do I could calibrate the compass I already made another video for me to demonstrate on how to calibrate the compass on my golf master over here because I have an issue before I already filmed that video a special video on compass calibration only and fixed the compass just in case the compass on your G-Shock didn't show the uh, exact or correct direction anyway we're gonna have three types of calibration or uh, just two types and one setting first being this infinity loop method of what I called it where it is this is one of the most famous uh, method that we usually use to calibrate our watch or even our uh, smartphone these day where you move your watch all around like this so that's how it works and it will say okay and the compass already calibrated that is interesting next we're gonna have three point calibration method from a lower and G-Shop you're gonna need to only set up to two point calibration in this point we have three we're just going to set it up parallel like here and all the way around and down below so that's about it I already demonstrated it on that video I don't want to make this video way longer than it's supposed to you know so stay tuned for that it will be out after this video so not too long press this mode but then we'll go to the next setting which is the declination correction this if you really rely on your G-Shock to tell the direction you really need to set this thing up in your watch all G-Shock have this feature and what this thing does is that it will add or minus few degrees uh, to the original compass reading just now from the magnetic compass and making it more for, far more accurate based on your location of course if I'm not mistaken in Japan we're looking at east 7 degree you can know this information just by Google or looking at a map that is representing your exact location that is a way for you to do so I mean that is the only way to do so okay down on here if I press mode again we'll go back and I'll push the crown back in you can see that the north direction that was pointed before was actually 7 degree off to this direction I already add another 7 so it's gonna be way up here as degrees so there is a lot of change in direction uh, bearing reading I mean if you're really gonna rely on this space to show direction that setting over there is crucial I mean look at it, 7 degree could lead to way off in the loss well, I don't know what you're gonna do. The point is that part is very important. Okay, however, in my case, I don't want to mess that thing up. I want to reset it back to zero, push both of these buttons at the same time, and bam, the combination of we are now reset that to zero already. Push the crown back in. Down on the compost mode actually, and if I press this display button, nothing will happen. Look at that. And if I want to store the information just in case, uh, I want to record the direction of all this fragment over here. So it's going to be like 195 degree uh, south southwest. Push this button and hold it. Record. And I'll store that uh, bearing reading, which I could uh, review it at a recall mode after this. Down on the compass. Very simple actually. 
And if I press this sensor, we'll go to the next one, triple beat for altimeter. This part is almost similar to the uh, barometer actually, where the second hand will point it up to this ring over here. If I press this display button up here, it will continue displaying time instead. If I press it back, it will go back to this position. Okay, seems like it's already rising a little bit, indicates that there's sudden change in a uh, height altimeter. But do keep in mind that this altimeter thing is based on this barometer. If this somehow, if somehow the atmospheric pressure in my room increased, this part will change even though I'm just in my room. I didn't go anywhere, the altimeter reading should be flat, but the barometer could change and hence uh, disturb this reading. So do keep it in mind as well. And uh, similar thing again. If I pull the crown out, I can set this thing up as well, which is to calibrate this reading just in case you have other source of uh, altimeter measurement gauge in your room for some reason. Let's fast scroll this thing up. I mean, there it is. You can set this thing up as well or reset it to your current location before you start your jungle trekking or mountain climbing or whatever. Uh, stop it. And you can reset it back, of course, to factories. I think there it is. If I press this mode button down here, we are now at interval time, which is at 2 minutes or 5 seconds, which is totally different from the barometer, which was 2 hours and 30 minutes. In this case, only 2 minutes or 5 seconds. What this thing does is that if you set your watch to interval of 5 seconds, the watch will update you the reading or the graph or the altimeter at every 1 second for the first 3 minutes and then continue updating for about every 5 seconds for the next 1 hour. If you set your watch, to update you to every two minutes instead the watch will keep continue update the altimeter every seconds for the first three minutes and then update you every two minutes for 12 hour after 12 hour had been reached the watch will go back to home time so that's about it on this part and next we're gonna have a different or uh, the uh, scale actually a hundred meter or a thousand meter what this thing does is that it will max out all this to 1000 or max out all of this to 100 meter. What that means is that whenever you set this thing to 100, each of these numbers here will represent 10 meters. So it's gonna max out at 100. If you set this to 1000, each of this scale will be at 100 each. So whenever you reach 100 meter, this hand will point out 1 to all the way to 1000 meter. The range that this G-Shock could measure is between negative 700 meters all the way to 10,000 meters so keep that in mind once you reach to your starting point before you begin your hiking or climbing or jungle trucking or whatever press this button up here to reset any difference that had been stored in the watch so now it's already been reset this part of the hill is supposed to go to zero all right then you need to pull this thing back up before you start your journey and set this meter based on your exact location. Let's say your starting point is at 70 meters above sea level and the watch didn't show 70 meters, it shows 67. You need to set that part to 70. And then, based on your uh, distance that you will be traveling, let's say you're just uh, climbing over a 200 meter or 300 meter hill, you just need gonna set this uh, interval to five seconds only because you're not gonna travel at a long distance that requires too much time. Let's set this thing up to 5 seconds only. Then, you need to set this thing up as well, based on your uh, travel uh, distance. In my case, let's use 100 meter only. And then, press this thing up. Now, I could begin uh, with my journey to climb the hills or mountain. Let's say you're gonna meet up with all of your hiking buddy at a 200 meter uh, lodge or camping area from your location. All you need to do now is just start climbing. When you reach 200 meters, you should know right away that if there are no camping area presents that gonna equal that you already lost and all at the same time as well if you reach 200 meters and there is a camping site you know right away you are at the exact or at the right place Let's zoom in a little bit all of those bars those square bars over there we're looking at three of them all of those each of them will represent 10 meters so in this case three bars which is 30 meters uh, difference in uh, altitude based from previous location but I'm not sure why in my room right now I didn't go anywhere at all I just stay in here and for some reason this altimeter reading keep rising and in my case I didn't recall that I live in in a place that is 70 meters above sea level which is uh, ridiculous if if I'm not mistaken, my place where I'm living right now is only about 30 meters, something like that. So, 
That is the thing that you need to consider as well when you almost do this because this altitude was based on barometer and this barometer is affected by my environment in my room right now. Let's say uh, the pressure rise, all of a sudden this thing will rise as well, which is uh, ridiculous. Same goes with the range main, by the way. But look at that, look at that, almost similar. So down on this altimeter mode, let's go to the next one, which is this thermometer. This part is very simple actually. All I need to do is look at here, and that is it, 34.0 degrees Celsius. And if I pull the crown out, of course I could calibrate this, just in case I have another uh, temperature gauge that I rely on, I could calibrate this to match with that uh, reading, stop, or I could just reset it back to factory setting. Look at that. Push the crown back in, and that is it on the thermometer. Let's compare this to the range man. Let's see now, look at that. And on the golf master, it shows it 34.0. On the range man, it shows 32.7 degree. And why is that? In, in my opinion, I believe the reading on this Golf Master is far more accurate on the reading on this range man and that is based on the principle on how the thermometer work. The thermometer actually located in the watch as well, built in there. The sensor is built to detect the uh, temperature of the watch case which at the same time will be affected by the temperature of its surrounding which is in my room right now. So let's say my room is at 34.2 degree, it's gonna heat up this casing of this G-Shop over here and when this thing is heat up, it will heat up the sensor as well and hence the sensor will tell us the temperature is rising. So, in order to get an accurate or more precise reading, you need to give more exposure to the watch. In other words, the bigger surface area exposed to the environment, the more precise or more accurate or more faster uh, temperature measurement could be performed and that is why I said that this golf master could uh, check the temperature better than the range man and one of the reasons is that I look at how big the casing on the golf master model is the this part here is the watch band and the bezel that this model have just tiny bits here look at all this resin part this is just all the bezel this model have which is very thin and slim and hence give a lot of uh, exposure to the surrounding for the casing this part or this part or at the back part over here. Compare this to the lower end G Shock. Even though the, on, the only place for a lower end model could tell or detect the change in temperature is from the back plate because this part is resin material, it is very hard to be uh, affected by change in thermometer or temperature. Sorry, the hard case of this model also in resin material as well. So the Easiest way for the quick or the quickest way for the this watch to know the temperature is based on the change in temperature on this uh, back plate over here, and that is one of the reason why Casio add a lot of groove here and a lot of engraving on higher end or middle end. I believe all of this not just for uh, aesthetic, all of this also to increase the surface area that's exposed to the environment as well. And compare both of these. Look at that. Look at the Golf Master G Shock. The Golf Master has way more engraving, way more groove here and there. Look at it, how deep that thing is. And all of this, even though they have Casio made them to look very beautiful and look at all uh, finishing as well, at the same time, this is gonna increase the surface area exposed to the surrounding. And of course, all this will be affected on how precise the sensor gonna measure this uh, temperature reading in my room right now. I mean, look at that, the casing is very small. Look at the hard case for this golf master, also very tiny as well. So that's a thing you need to consider as well. I believe a similar build was applied on the Frogman triple sensor model as well. As you guys, if you guys haven't noticed, the, that watch is very big and the casing for the bezel is almost, I mean, very slim actually. I'm not sure about the mod master because although the watch has a big and lots of engraving here and there, but the casing, the bezel itself on top is pretty thick. So I need to own one of that first to give uh, or compare the temperatures at the side, but that's coming up in the future, I guess. But for now, as far as the temperature, we are done. 34.5 degrees Celsius. Press this uh, sensor button again. We are now at depth meter. The hand will go to here and this part is fully automatic. I cannot demonstrate to you guys without me going underwater at all, but I just can tell you that in this mode, if you press this up button up here, you can change to how many minutes you're already diving underwater. 
or how many meters you are already on a weather in digital and also in analog so this hand will move all the way to 10 20 30 40 50 meters only after you already start calculating or after this watch already automatically start measuring the depth and also the time of your dive and all that at the same time you could press this sensor button down here to access the compass while you're doing your dive and also you could press this again to access the thermometer as well so in other words this watch could be used as a dive timer or as a dive uh, measurement or dive uh, diving watch and at the same time you could measure the water temperature and also the compass or the direction you are heading while you are diving on the water which is pretty neat and I believe exactly similar function as the triple sensor frogman so you're gonna get a best of both world arrangement a mod master and a frogman in a single g shell even though that frogman is way better it's, it's way more tougher and that was built to dive way deeper than this watch could ever be because this watch only have a carbon fiber a reinforced uh, casing i mean the uh, hard case the frogman is dlc coating which is way more tougher to build to dive even deeper in this case that's about it and if i'm not mistaken whenever after you go for a dive the watch will turn off the auto light you need to turn the auto light by the light by yourself i like the frogman everything will still remain the same and that's about it on this depth meter of course you could press this and save this information as well even though the watch will automatically save that reading at the same time just in case you want to manually save it if i pull the crown in this mode we'll see look at that it will just tell me to push the crown back in because we couldn't set up anything in here let's push this back in and uh, I believe time to lock the crown because we already covered all four sensors on this G-Shock watch and all some of my thoughts and opinion on the overall build of Golf Master actually press mode will go to home time and then press mode again will go to recall this is where we could view again everything or every information we store over here is the timestamp store our store is three uh, number two number three number four number five number six number seven all the way to 40 informations let's go through the latest one that we start just now i believe at 22 at 21st of august 23 will be 21st of august 24 will be at 22nd of august which is today and here it is the first information 22nd of august and at 3 uh, p.m 336 and the atmosphere pressure was recorded at 1007 and then I store another information as well at uh, 342 a degree of 219 degree and then I store another information as well I believe at 3 uh, yeah 56 meter and then I store another information again which is just now at, uh, 0 meter at 620 p.m. so that's done on the recall mode I could erase this uh, information is if I want to as well let's do, let me show you guys real quick how to do so here is all of them number three all right press this uh, display button in here and the clear will appear if I keep pressing all clear will appear which I'm not going to do so I'm gonna save some of the previous information which I already stored in here okay that's done on all the term I believe I already covered everything that you need to know on all the four sensor on this Golf Master G-Shock watch. And you know what? Let's go back to home time and just uh, go through real quick on the test screen. This is uh, one version of the test screen. They have two of them. This is HOD for home home display. This will be the city code. This will be the receive function. This will be the solar test. This will be the tilt test. To test if your watch is still functioning or not on the auto light this is the movement test this will be if i'm not mistaken something to do with uh timer and all this will be the age for the moon age for this will be the uh, alarm i'm not sure this will be the uh japan receive something i can't recall this will be auto this will be the depth meter this will be the uh, loop thing again similar as at the compass one to be I'm not sure for the compass I'm not sure about this this okay will appear at a compass mode whenever you successfully calibrate your compass and back to HOD if you press this button up here it will shows you all the test screen that you were supposed to see look at that so we're gonna have signal DST barrel or in limited HG I mean the mercury measurement signal over there barrel and HPA all will appear so the test screen on this piece is very much simple because it only happens very tiny uh, 
digital display but I mean yeah look at that that is all it, it gonna expect in here look at that basically just a measurement unit and some alarm signal and all that simple things so I believe most of you guys already know about those already this will be the code 40, 5477, 5477 module with some numbering F04 I'm not sure about all those and we're back to home time I believe they have one one more test screen actually at each every one of these if you press this button up here home display all right if you go back again go back to CTY press it up here it will set to SEL which uh, I believe the city code they are storing here NYC UTC London and all you can check all those as well go back again um, to H and from here wait I already messed up and here the HOD press city you go to the next RCV it will check uh, which uh, signal that you receive in the watch in my case J40 Japan 40 40 40 40 Hertz signal that this was I received down on that go back to on time keep going on RCV SLR push this light button up here and we'll check as uh, the solar panel is it working or not in my case let me cover this thing up and there is 888 volt here which means the solar panel is working so I know I could charge the watch press this again it's pretty uh, inconvenient because I need to go through everything all right for the tilt press the thing up to begin testing the watch yeah I was already tilting because the gyroscope is very sensitive done on that go it all over again I want to go through everything it's tilting this will be the movement check is a zero so nothing uh, fishy I mean oh, I'm sorry so nothing uh, we are going on I believe if I'm not mistaken if something is off like the second hand is not measuring an accurate time as shown in digital something will appear over there SFT push this thing up to check uh, yeah minimum yeah this is what I said about uh, timer or stop or something like that minimum for all the hour you can set it up for sub down or something press this thing back oh I'm sorry Press this thing back and show this RCV SLR to the movement SFT. This will be the moon H, I guess. So it will go down here for some reason. Look at that H, yeah. And uh, go back to home time. Press this thing back. HODC RCL TLTM maybe TSFT H and PL. Press this thing up. You'll see right away. S01 for some reason this thing will move out of the way to 12 o'clock M01 SO2 MO2 HR sub dial check sub dial check over here to the right SO1 so everything should be aligned in the middle here just in case when you enter this part and this arrow hand didn't align you know right away there's something wrong in your watch there's a neat thing to know as well and go back to the screen CDR, CDR, S50H, BL, JTR, ATR, depth will be the depth meter. This will be the loop again. Let's say COM, or look at that. I don't, I have no idea what this thing means actually. Oh, yeah, we already set this thing to fit in HG. Yeah. For some reason, did I just set the watch? You know what? Ah, I believe I already set the watch to another city code. Am I right? Go back to home time. Over here, HOD, city, up here, NYC. Yeah. If I change this thing back to Tokyo, oops, I missed it. Let's change this back to Tokyo. The H will be there, right? And done. Now go to this barrel issue. Yeah, hectopascal. And seems like we are able to change the home time or the city home time on this watch from the test screen. So uh, I would recommend you guys to not mess up with the test screen on this watch because that could uh, switch things in in the background of this space and totally gonna mess up all your setting. So yeah, keep that in mind as well. You can have a look at it, but try not to disturb it as much. That is all that you need to know on this very complicated Golf Master G-Shock watch even though it looks very simple, very sleek. They have a lot of functions that no other G-Shock model have yet. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative as well for your future reference. Leave a like and also subscribe and also comment down below if I miss anything important. 
I'm very sure it's gonna be very helpful for other collectors as well and for me as well. Thank you very very much for watching guys. This is G-Shock High Fashion Channel and um